The study is derived from a theory of mind-body unity. And let mm -hmm. me just briefly explain this. Um, to me, mind, body, these were just words. And I said, let's put them back together. And if we do that, wherever we put the mind, we're necessarily putting the mind, uh, the body. So what we did was, in the first study, was put the mind back in time and then take measurements from the body. We mm -hmm. took a retreat that we had retrofitted to 20 years earlier and had men in their 80s and 90s living there for the course of a week as if they were their younger selves. They watched programs, movies from the past, uh, yet discussed them as if they had just happened. Um, everything about it was reminiscent of the past. And we took lots of measures before we did this, and then measures at the end. And it was amazing to see the changes that occurred. Um, the, and remember, this is only a period of five days. Uh, their hearing improved, you know, which I had never heard of an older person, even younger people's hearing improving. Their vision improved, their mental acuity improved, and um, in addition to other things, the photographs we took of them before and then after, we showed them to people who didn't know anything about the study, and we asked them how old they thought the person was, and those in this experimental group looked noticeably younger at the end. Truth be told, they didn't look 20 years younger, but still. And this was the first of many, many studies that we can talk about if you're interested. But the, the key to what's going on here is that we all have far more control over our health and well-being than most of us realize. But you know, think about it, it was a tremendous effort. I mean, you know, first of all, this was before Google. So when you want, and we did this in 1979, so we were trying to replicate 1959. Now all you do is you ask Google, tell me about 1959. We couldn't do it then. It was a massive effort for us. Mm -hmm. So of course I believed it would work or else I probably wouldn't have done it. Um, we had an earlier study with a nursing home where we went into a nursing home and we gave people choices to make. Just that simple. Um, about uh, when they wanted to see a movie, we gave them a plant to take care of, uh, where they wanted to visit with friends. And it, that very simple, simple sorts of choices, when we went back to the nursing home 18 months later, half as many in this group had died as in the comparison groups. That really helped usher in mind-body medicine. So I already had evidence that the way we think about ourselves, the world, the way we engage it, has very um, big consequences for us. You know, so I had my graduate student postdocs working with me again. This was before uh, people fought for uh, women's rights or fully for, but, you know, and the reason I say that is that I found myself on the bus going to the retreat with um, uh, seven old men and seven suitcases. And um, I didn't realize it, you know, I didn't have any of my male students with me. And when we got to the retreat, right from the beginning, I said to them that they're responsible for their old suitcases. Now, these are people who barely, you know, could walk. I mean, they were uh, able to walk, but they, they really seemed old. When they came to see if they could be in the study, their um, adult child, usually a daughter, came with them, answered most of the questions for them, and so on. So by by all uh, impressions, they were old. Um, here, by saying to them, you're responsible for your suitcase. I don't care if you move it an inch at a time to get it to your room or if you unpack it here. Well, I mean, that was so vastly different from what they were used to. And that was for the comparison group. Now, this comparison group was not going to put themselves back in time. They were simply going to reminisce for the week. But because of that push forward, um, they also showed um, big uh, changes and improvements in the course of the week, just not as many as the experimental group. You know, there's a tendency to try for older people to make life easy. You make it too easy, there's no opportunity for challenges, for feelings of mastery. You know, so I used to argue, nobody listened to me, but that if, if we went into nursing homes and we made them a little harder, that it would actually be doing a favor for people. You know, uh, I was doing this uh, television show and I had suggested to them, this is 40 years ago, that they might want to open like this. They didn't. And I suggested this to many people since. Nobody did.
but it was you have a in the camera and you're asking a person wouldn't it be wonderful to have every need met to have somebody taking care of everything you wanted in life and prepare you know and then the camera goes to a nursing home you know for people to realize no that's not really what i want um the struggle that we argue against um you know is really part of the the essence of life 